What's happening guys? Ari here with Boston Automotive Consulting and today I want to give you five major reasons why it won't make sense to lease out luxury cars and one major reason why it will. If you're logging onto one of my videos for the very first time, I want to encourage you to please consider subscribing because besides some of these more general car buying tips that I give, I also give out a ton of vehicle specific negotiation guides that I'd love for you to catch as soon as I publish them. And guys, diving right in. Number one, I'm typically never sure exactly if I'll even get to 10,000 miles a year with 6,000 miles a year being the average amount that I drive per year. When I got this M4, I thought to myself, man, I baby my cars. A lot of the mileage that I do is usually city miles and even if I'm gonna be taking it long distance, long distance for me is probably 10 miles down the highway and back. For me, 10,000 miles, if we were to get a 30,000 mile allowance for the whole three year lease and I brought back the car with 18,000 miles, at that 12,000 miles, nobody's cutting me a check for. So I really preferred if I could, instead of having that value go to waste, keep it in the value of the car so that if I decide to maybe trade it into CarMax or trade it into a dealer, that I could profit off of how clean the car was kept. So at the time that I got my vehicle, and this happens a lot, especially during the holidays, the lease cash that was available to make somewhat of an unattractive lease a little bit more attractive was also available if you were planning on financing the car. And I thought to myself, man, you'll see in my next points why, but if I'm gonna be getting the same amount of discount, I really can't justify putting it into a lease, so I decided to just finance anyway. Now, with that being said, because this is a specialty luxury car, and if you're looking at a Mercedes AMG, a Range Rover, you know, some Audis like the A7, et cetera, there is no major lease cash. The only time there's major lease cash available on cars like the one I'm driving is usually during the end of their production cycle. If you're looking at a more mainstream luxury vehicle such as maybe the E-Class, the 5 Series, then definitely make sure that there's some hefty lease cash promoting that lease or else you'll probably end up spending way more over the course of three years than had you just bought the car and tried to sell it in three years after owning it. Now, one big reason why it kind of didn't make sense to lease or purchase, but hey, I needed a car. What I'm trying to recommend to you isn't so, so much that you buy instead of lease because of the tax implications, but because you're leasing out a vehicle with the intention of probably returning it after three years, you're still in charge for a big bulk of the tax to be paid on the full value the first year. Now, given that you're not planning on keeping it forever, your local jurisdiction really doesn't care. And they, whenever you're leasing out a vehicle, especially in states like Massachusetts, it's not just the tax on the payment, but in some cases, such as Massachusetts, we get charged personal property tax, which is based on not the depreciated amount, but the whole value of the car. So for me, I guess my recommendation would be if you're trying to avoid a hefty tax bill, especially if you're looking at something that costs well over $75,000, maybe look into a one to two year old certified pre-owned of that same vehicle so that you could at the very least save on the taxes. The main reason why I wanna stress CPO is for the next point guys, major luxury cars such as BMWs, Audis, etc. usually these vehicles see the biggest chunk of depreciation take place in the first two years. Most of the people driving these vehicles, it's sad to see, but they usually turn them in way before a three year lease is done. You could pretty much walk into any one of these dealerships and pick out a beautiful, pristine, two-year-old CPO'd version of this vehicle, pay way less, get way longer warranty coverage, probably qualify for some promotional CPO interest rates, and just overall get a much better deal, especially taking into account what I'm about to say next, guys, the money factor. Anytime you're leasing out a non-subvented luxury vehicle, a non-subvented luxury vehicle is usually an E-Class, something a little bit more mainstream where they incentivize the lease altogether. Say for instance, if you're seeing 4% APR being offered as like the typical market APR, 4% APR is probably the lowest that you're gonna see on a lease, sometimes you'll see way higher, especially on Range Rovers and AMGs. And here's the bad news, you guys. 
So if you're getting a 4% APR on a lease, that translates to a 0.00167 money factor. So on a $75,000 loan, that equates to about a $7,900-ish finance charge over the five years. Similarly, on a three-year lease on a $75,000 BMW M4, for instance, and undervaluing the money factor here, it's, it was actually a little bit more at the time. At a 0.00167 money factor, we were dealing with a $7,300 finance charge for three years. Here's the kicker. Here's why I actually purchased this time around. It wasn't 4% promo APR. BMW at the time that I purchased this was offering a 1.9% APR, making the finance charge literally half. When you're combining major finance charges on a lease with the acquisition fee, with the disposition fee, not using it enough, using it way more than 15,000 miles a year, however you decide to drive, it just costs unnecessary money that you're literally burning. You're throwing it in the trash. And now here is the kicker you guys, and here is something that I worry about constantly. This is all under the presumption, guys, that I'm not going to get into an accident with this M4. The reason why I'm saying this is, is as soon as you get into an accident, you will see a major depreciation happen on that car, and that's where leasing helps you out a little bit. They don't look at accidents. They're not gonna bill you for an accident that was repaired. The chance that you're taking in financing at the lowest APRs and keeping it in meticulous condition, you have to account for the fact that it's possible that it may see an incident report on the Carfax and you lose that money that you thought that you were gonna be saving altogether by not leasing. This is a major concern that I constantly have and that's probably why I don't drive as much as I'd like to However, it's still not stopping me from enjoying it. Hopefully, you don't run into one of these scenarios. However, it is something that I do think about and I try not to let anyone get too, too close to the car. <laughs> so guys, I hope that this video really drove home my point about why it doesn't make sense to lease out some luxury vehicles. And in no way am I telling you that it'll make even that much more sense if you purchase. What I'm trying to drive home is, if you can, Find something a couple years old as a clean, certified pre-owned one, or if you have to, suck it up and just purchase it and keep it in really good condition. If you found this information useful and you wanna see more of these new car buying and negotiation tip type videos, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.